good, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. So this is where we are going to begin. And our topic today is bitter waters made sweet. Bitter waters made sweet. Only God can take that which was meant to be a curse. Only God can take that which has been tormenting you and uh, challenging you and trying to lay snares before you and buffet you. Only God can take that thing that was meant to destroy you or to discourage you and turn it into a blessing when you give it to God. And this is what we are going to read today. And it is bringing us up to this point in the 22nd verse of um, Exodus, the fifth, 15th chapter. And I want all of us to read together. Start reading. If you're reading from the King James, excellent. If you have another translation, then you can just listen. But we're going to read from the King James this morning because I think the majority of you have the King James uh, transliteration. So let's read verse 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Sir, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. They walked three days. You know, as scientists say that our bodies can really do without food longer than we can water. And that if we don't have food, if we have water, we can be sustained. Amen. Amen. So they went three days into the wilderness and had no water. Now let's see what happened. Now this was after God had delivered them, that had brought them out of Egypt and had brought them successfully uh, across unto dry land. Verse 23, and when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. The waters of, wait a minute, the waters, the what, can you hear me? The waters of Mara were what? Bitter. Underline that word bitter. Therefore, read, the name of it was called Mara, and the people murmured against Moses, saying, what shall we drink? Now, see, that is one thing that we as the people of God need to learn how, and this is what I keep talking to you about, keep talking to you about, don't talk so much. Study to be quiet. Work at being quiet. Strive to be quiet. Learn how to just close your mouth. And I told the Lord, I said, you know what, Father? I'm not going to mummer, and I'm not going to complain about anything. The Father told us in um, the beginning of the year on New Year's Eve night that this would be a year of what? Thanksgiving. A year of Thanksgiving. So that means no mummering. No complaining Amen. to each other, not even to yourself. Amen. Amen. We are going to what? Give what? Thanks. We are going to give thanks. We're going to thank God in all things, through all things. How can you do that? Because you know that God has already given us what? The victory. So you're not looking at what your circumstances might say. You're not looking at what your bank account says. You're giving what? Thanks in all things and through all things. Let's continue to read. Verse 25. And he cried unto the Lord, speaking about Moses, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet, and there he made for them a statue and an audience, and there he proved them. Following 
instructions of the Lord. That is important to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit so that when an earth adverse situation seems to be at first, the Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom how to make bitter water sweet. But you need the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. Now, there are some prerequisites. This is what we're going to talk about today. Amen? As we're talking about bitter waters. And it was really, the waters were really bitter. This wasn't their imagination. They tasted the water, and they were bitter, and the water was not good to drink. So, but God always has the remedy. For his, for his covenant people. All we need to do, keep our mouth shut, don't murmur, don't, murmur. Don't, complain. don't complain, don't gossip, don't, gossip. don't, backbite. don't backbite, don't sow discord, don't sow discord. Be, quiet. be quiet, and hear, and hear. Instructions, instructions from the Father. From the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. See, oftentimes, people of God, you can't hear because you're talking too much. Your spirit has to be quiet. Your spirit has to be at peace. You have to be at peace on the inside. You can't have all of these inner wars and all of these conflicts, inner unforgiveness and bitterness and hatred and anger, these are conflicts that will oppose you having peace. God speaks in peace. He does not speak in confusion. Father, the Holy Spirit, is not going to compete with your anger. He is not going to compete with your unforgiveness. He is not going to compete with your bitterness and your wrath. All of this going on in the eye, inside of you. He's not going to compete with your clamor. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, say this, say the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit does, not does not war, war against, our against our flesh. Huh? Yeah. The Holy Spirit fights for fights for you, not against you. <laughs> he, he's not going to be in competition with you. You want to be angry? He'll let you be angry. But he says, put aside. Who has to put it aside? You make a decision. I'm not going to walk in anger. I, I, I make a choice to forgive. I make a choice. I decide to love. But they're not lovable. Who cares? Hey, I want the Holy Ghost to fight for me, not against me. See, your flesh wars against the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't war against your flesh. You have to deal with your flesh. That's your job. You have to deal with your emotions. My father don't, he's not getting into this emotional, you know, vasculation we go through. Up and down, up and down. He said, look, if you want to waver and be tossed to and fro like the sea, you're not going to receive anything to me. I'm, I'm not into that. Father said, be still, yeah. be at peace, yeah. be at rest, yeah. and know that I am God. Yeah. He's not going to fight with you. We fight, we resist the Holy Spirit. He don't resist us. Uh, 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 are you clear? Yeah. No. He, he, he's not, how would you? Look, you don't stand a chance. If God wants to get in the fist of cups with you. Huh? Every 
with us on our head, what, our head, arms too short to box with God. It's a no win. That's just like, you know, Christopher Jr. trying to get in a fight with um, who's a heavyweight champion? <laughs> huh? Who's a heavyweight champion? Mayweather. It's a no win, right? Amen. And it's even more ridiculous for you to think that you can box with God and win. God said, look, that's foolishness. I'm not into that. You deal with yourself. And when you deal with all this inner war and all this inner conflict, all of this anger, all this bitterness, all this guile that you have in you, then come on. We can do this. Amen? Amen. 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 So, you know, stop murmuring. You're hindering yourself. You're defeating yourself. Let's read. All right. And verse 26. Now, this is it right here. Because, you know, God had brought them out of slavery over 400 years, brought them through the Red Sea, destroyed the enemy, had brought them into a place where water was, but it was bitter. They were thirsty after three days of travel in the desert. They were very thirsty. So God told Moses, just take up a tree and put it in the water. Just pick up a tree. Now, uh, what you mean, pick up a tree? You mean you don't want me to speak to it? You mean that you're not going to send a lightning bolt down and, you know, strike the water? No, I said, no, no, no. Just do something simple. Just obey me. Don't question. Say, don't question me. Just do what I say. Just pick up the tree, hallelujah, and put it in the water. And trust me that the next time you taste this bit of water, because you obeyed me, it's going to be sweet. It's all in the obedience. And look at what he said. He's given them some instruction. Some very important instruction. He said, verse 26, read, and said, if, right under that, uh, uh, put up, if, if. Say, so this is a conditional promise. Say, so I have something to do with it. It's not all God. I must do my part. All right, let's find out what your part is. Amen. If, say if. if. Hallelujah. And don't say thou. Say if I will. If I will. Put your name in there. Amen. Right, right, put your name right there. Whatever your name, if it's Sally, Dick, John, Joe, Jack and Jill, whatever it is, write it in there. So that the next time you read this passage of scripture, you will see that the father is no longer just talking to the Israelites. He's talking to what? You, personally. He says, if thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is what? Right. Underline right. If you would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and do that which is right. In other words, obey whatever the Father has told you to do. In his sight. Oh, this is important here. You do what is right in the sight of God, not in the sight of people. God would tell you to do some things that people would say, I don't believe it. The Holy Ghost would tell you to do some things and say, well, I never heard of that before. I wouldn't do that if I were you. You're not me. You're not hearing what I hear. I'm doing what is right in the sight of the Father. 
I am hearkening to what? His voice, not people's voice. See, that's what's wrong. That's what's wrong. That's why a lot of you are off. You have too many pastors. Oh, yeah, you have pastors everywhere. Your buddy is your pastor. Your pastor's on the TV, radio. Your pastor is somebody that don't really even have a fervent relationship with the Lord. And you are hearkening to their voice. And you are not diligently seeking to hear clearly. Say, so I, I must hear clearly. It must not be the sin of presumption. I can't assume what I assume. No, no, you can't assume. If you're not sure that it's the Father speaking, be what? Still. Be quiet. Have peace within yourself. Turn off the television. Stay off that telephone. Get all of your pastors out of your ear. Have too many people, I just have too many pastors. Yeah. Just too many. I'll do, I'll do it if you do it. I'll go if you go. I'll say it if you say it. I'll believe it if you believe it. But not hearkening and seeking diligently after the voice of God so that you can do. What is what? Right in his sight. And once you know you're doing what is right in the Father's sight, you don't, you don't converse with people. Well, what do you think? You know, I think the Lord is telling me this. What you hear? Huh? Something wrong with that relationship. Something wrong with your relationship. You need to hear for yourself what the Father is speaking to you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. He says, I will do that which is right in his sight, speaking about the Father, and will give ear to what? His command. I'm going to do what he said. I'm going to listen to what the Father is saying. Don't matter what nobody is saying. Everybody has an opinion, but I'm not interested. What is the Father saying? I will hearken diligently to what I hear from him, and I will do his commandments and keep all of his statutes. I will, and then look at, look at here. Father says, I will put none of these diseases upon you. Oh, you have a point of reference. He said, think about all the diseases that you saw in Egypt. The boils and the plagues and the diseases. And uh, He said, you don't have to worry about any of that. He says, I will not put any of these diseases on you. If you just listen to my voice, hear what I say, and obey what I say. Not some of them, not those that you simply agree with. Not those that you simply, you know, say, okay, that's not too, that's not going to cost you nothing. No, you have to do all of them. You, you can't a little here and a little there. No, all. Say so all. all. All means what? All. All means all. Very good. If God said all, he means all. Nothing lacking. Leaving nothing out. Amen? Amen? And he says, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. That is the Hebrew name for the Lord that healeth us. He says, none of these diseases will I put on you that the Egyptians or that the world have. So these things you say, no evil shall come down my dwelling. Hallelujah. No sickness or disease to touch me. 
and my body flows the blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ took all of my sickness. He took all of my diseases. He took all of my infirmity that I need not bear the sickness and the disease of the world, of the Gentile, or, or of the unsaved, because I walk diligently in his word, and I obey his commandments. So, Father, I don't have to pray for healing. I don't have to pray for deliverance. I decree that I am healed. Hallelujah. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Glory. I decree that I am the head and not the tail. I decree that I am above only and never beneath. I decree that whatsoever my hands touch to, uh, for good shall prosper. I, I don't have to pray that. Why do I have to pray for healing? Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, heal my body. Uh, I decree. I'm covenant. I'm obedient. I keep his commandments. I walk in his statues. I've been delivered from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. It has been taken away from me. That's a part of the covenant. You're entitled to it. You're supposed to have it. You're supposed to walk in it. You deserve it. And you deserve it because Father made provision for you to receive it through Christ Jesus. And you deserve it because you're obedient to his command. Say, I'm covenant. God is a covenant keeping God. God, is a covenant -keeping God. And I'm a covenant keeping man or woman, whatever you are. You keep your part of the covenant. And I guarantee you, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, he's big enough, glory to God, to uphold everything that he's ever spoken over you. God has decreed blessings, hallelujah, upon you. He pronounced a benediction over you. He said it is finished, it is over. No longer are you under the curse. You are blessed going and you are blessed coming. That's what Father said. He spoke that benediction. He says, I come to bless them. Hallelujah. Jesus. Get this word in you. You stop being fearful. You stop every time a command is made on you. Lord, are you... Oh, I, you thinking about your, your mind go about to, back to what you have to do and how much you don't have and how much you have left. No, think about what God is going to give you. <laughs> Meditate on what you're going to receive, not what you just release. Jesus, somebody said Jesus. Jesus. Woo, say it again. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. That's one of our spiritual weapons. Say it again. Woo, give it praise. Yeah. Use that name. Hallelujah. Do warfare with that name. 